Pacific Coast Spotlight. I'm your host, Miera Jennings, and on this episode, we'll visit one of Balboa Island's sweet spots, a top stop for women's fashion, and we'll explore the paranormal legends of Black Star Canyon. Let's cruise on down the coast to our first destination, Too Sweet. This modern twist on an old classic is a sweet lover's paradise. Let's take a look. We headed over to beautiful Balboa Island, Newport Beach, where owner Nadia Baco was ready to fill us in on everything Too Sweet. So why don't you tell us a little bit about why you decided to open up another sweet shop when you have Too Sweet Brewery? Okay. Well, Too Sweet came about um, mainly from my sweet tooth. And it's kind of a unique product. You know, it's an old fashioned kind of, hasn't been around very long. First, we discussed a classic favorite. Okay, Nadia, what are some of your most popular items here? One of the most popular are our caramel apples. Mm -hmm. I make my own caramel here, homemade, um, right in the shop. Those are plain caramel apples. I have almonds here, peanuts. Up here are the top sellers, which are toffee and almonds. And this is a mixture of almonds and toffee. Apple pie is a really good one of my favorites, mm -hmm. and that's the brown sugar and cinnamon. Really good. And this is cheesecake. Got the white on the bottom base, which is like a satin white top. Really right. good. And then, of course, we have another. The Oreos are popular. Rainbow sprinkles, coconut. I've got some chocolate chips and m ms over here. And then I do holiday apples for Christmas for all my holidays. Right. So, it looks amazing. Well, if you're looking for a stomach ache or just to <laughs> satisfy your sweet tooth, these all sound amazing to me. I've never heard the cheesecake one, so. Really good. Got to try that one before I leave. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it didn't take too long for me to find out that Two Sweets' variety of treats would test anyone's self control. Oreos are a personal weakness of mine. Please explain to us what this beautiful creation is with the Oreos. This is going to be one of your favorites. Yeah. These are Oreo cups we make here. It's one of our popular items. What we do is mix this white satin chocolate with Oreo pieces throughout. Mm -hmm and put it in an Oreo cup, in a cupcake cup. Oh, and so, of course, garnish by an Oreo. Right. Really good, it tastes like the Oreo milk. So you get all the yumminess in one. Definitely try one. Okay, how about this crunchy creation? These are crunchy haystacks with coconut, and these are our cornflake haystacks. Yeah. And we mix with the milk chocolate, we have both versions of them. Cornflake, milk chocolate, and then the dark chocolate. And so is the coconut. That looks so good. These are peanut butter cups. We call them our peanut butter buckets mm -hmm. just because they're a little nice in size. So and peanut butter is inside of this chocolate. Yeah, a big ball of peanut butter, which we also make here and good. make here. <laughs> we also have this in milk chocolate. What about this one? These are our famous turtles that we make here, and they kind of look like turtles. We've got the pecan turtles. We also have this in dark, which are right here. And then I do a lot of the almond, cashew turtles, um, so a variety, both in milk and dark. And the caramel is the same caramel that I make for my apples, so they're fresh. Nice. Yeah. If you're feeling guilty about all the sweets, we did bring some fruit into the picture. Okay, so you do actually make some healthy treats here as well. Why don't you tell us about this? Thing? Absolutely. We make our dark chocolate with antioxidants, and it also has almonds and cranberry. So if you want that alternative of healthiness and sweetness, you have an option right here for you. Awesome. Best of both worlds right here. Absolutely. Soon it was time to put the vat of dipping chocolate to use. We've got our gloves on. We're ready to do some dipping. Yes. All right, let's do it. Okay. These are s'mores. And what they are is two graham crackers. You fill them with marshmallows, with a little bit of white chocolate inside, and dip the whole wow. thing in milk chocolate. Awesome. So now it's half dipped. And then what we do is just dip the other half here. Get it all around like that, and then bring it back up. Take the excess chocolate off there, roll it, and then place it right here. All right. Would you like to try one? Yes. Yeah. Let's go ahead and see how my dipping skills are. <laughs> <laughs> Turned out my dipping skills actually aren't too shabby, and the final product looked amazing. Mm. That looks so good. Dipping didn't stop there. Next was the famous Balboa Bar. 
And we have both vanilla ice cream or chocolate ice cream. Oh, wow. And what we do is make it fresh to order. So whatever the customer wants, we dip it fresh here. Like that. And one of the popular items, popular items, are the English toffee and almond mix right here. Wow. So what I do is just put it in here, spread it all over, and there's the bubble bar. Looks amazing. Very good. And finally, one of my personal favorites, the frozen banana. And the bubble bar concept, and one of the popular items for the bananas is this rainbow sprinkles. Mm. So kids yeah. love them, adults love them. And what it is is place it like that, roll it in the sprinkles, Overall, Two Sweets' delicious variety of desserts and friendly staff make it a must visit for anyone in the area. And before we hit the road, Nadia and Ryan prepared some sweets to go. To eat, it's fun. It takes the little challenge out of biting into the big apple like that, but um, that's the way we cut it. Mm. And it comes in eight little pieces. We put it on the tray. It's ready for you to enjoy. Perfect. I walked away with a full stomach and a very satisfied sweet tooth. Now it's time to indulge your inner fashionista at Modology. Come see why this one-stop style shop was voted the OC Hot List's number one women's boutique. We circle back to Balboa Island for a fashion fix at Modology, where owners Anna and Linda gave us the rundown on their unique style. We've been friends for a long time and I worked at a big department store and kind of wanted to start my own thing and so did Linda, so we decided to um, join together and open a boutique. What are some of your favorite things about being located in this area? Well, hello, look outside, it's so beautiful. <laughs> it's just great uh, for uh, traffic to come in, people to come in, our locals to come in, um, and uh, we, couldn't, we couldn't ask for any place better. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful area. Yeah. The island's beauty is just an added plus to Modology's notable design and decor, which make it no surprise that the boutique recently received a very impressive title. Now, Modology was voted the number one women's boutique on the 2014 OC Hot List. Tell us a little bit about your reaction to that and what very makes excited. Modology so unique. Oh, we are we are very excited, and um, what sets us apart is, uh, I believe, our customer service. We right. have great staff and um, we all love people. And that people loving, paired with the shop's fashionable pieces, make their in-house styling service with Anna so successful. And I just, I don't know, I just have always loved it. Like I said, I worked in a um, retail, I've been in retail for many years and it's always been my I love to dress people from head to toe, and I would love, I love to take people off the street and do that. It's just great. Um, I want everyone to feel good and look good. Modology is also known for their wide variety of premium denim and top brands, including everything from Seven for All Mankind and Free People to Wild Fox and Peace Love World. Um, we're really known for our cozy, fun, casual fabrics. Something that you could just go to the beach on or just walk the island or anywhere. You know, nowadays it's a little more casual during the day. Their high quality fitness and casual wear also set them apart. So this is um, Peace Love World. Like I said, it was out of Florida. This is our Love I Love Sundays shirt. This was um, one of Oprah's favorite things on our show oh, this wow. year. So we love this. This is the most soft, feel this, how great this is. It's oh, just very it's soft. Manual. And it's oh, um, great quality. So it's very fun. Yeah. And the wash is great, keeps its shape, it's perfect. And it's just fun to wear if you're going on a Sunday and watching sports, <laughs> <laughs> like I do. Modology's accessories further complement their one of a kind style, and their jewelry is no exception. This is our initial bar. 
um, initials are very big right now as far as we have our um, necklaces that have all the initials on them. They're all our jewelry is um, gold filled and sterling silver so it doesn't fade or tarnish which nice. is really nice. And we do a lot of um, bracelets with charms. We sell them separate and also um, a lot of layering. You can customize it and uh, we have uh, several pieces throughout the store um, to customize your own uh, necklaces and bracelets. We then looked at some of the store's most popular jewelry by Adorn. She does a lot of unique stuff. Every, um, she takes vintage pieces and creates necklaces, bracelets, and everything around those unique pieces. It's such a great um, uh, design, and knowing that it's made here locally yeah. is always a big plus, too. And Modology's bath and body essentials are also a major plus. Your bath and body accessories smell amazing. Please tell us a little <laughs> bit about these. Well, this is um, Lalia, which is a brand out of LA, and it is incredible. It has different scents. It's another one of Oprah's it's favorite fa things. Wow. So we have a it's a beautiful packaging. Yes, the packaging's great. The price points are incredible. Mm -hmm. um, the scents are all different. Everyone has their own scents that they like. Within each scent, there's candles, there's um, bath salts, there's air freshener, there's linen. And travel and travel size. Yeah. During our visit, it was plain to see why Modology landed the top spot on the OC hot list. Altogether, the boutique's fresh fashion trends, friendly staff, savvy in-house styling, and head-turning decor make it the perfect place for any woman looking to add a little flair to her wardrobe. Next, we're shining our spotlight on the deep, dark history of Black Star Canyon. Join us as we venture into the world of the paranormal with OC Ghosts and Legends Tours. We channeled our inner Blair Witch Project and geared up to explore the urban legends of Black Star Canyon. We didn't know exactly what we had gotten ourselves into, but we were ready. You ready, Mira? I'm ready. Are you sure? I'm ready to go. We're here. <laughs> okay. No turning back now. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're something straight out of Blair Witch Project. Yeah, we were just talking about that. <laughs> After a little preparation, the sun finally went down and it was time to begin our journey. All right, we're here with Chris, owner and operator of OC Ghosts and Legends Tours. How are you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? It's nice to see you again. It's great to be back. Thank you. So, why don't you just tell us a little bit about why Black Star Canyon is such a popular place for ghost tours and paranormal activity? Well, uh, you know, Black Star uh, has countless legends here. Um, it's one of Orange County's most notorious paranormal hotspots. The daunting history of Black Star Canyon has kept many people away but we were ready to explore and learn more about the legends. All right, well, we're ready to go if you are. Let's go. All right, let's do it. First, Chris introduced us to some important technology. This is called the K2 meter. You guys may recognize this from a lot of TV shows. Um, we utilize this in, in the majority of our investigations. Um, it is believed that we are able to communicate uh, with spirits via uh, EMF, which is electromagnetic fields. Uh, so you'll see that it's going to be pretty much on a baseline, which right. is going to be the first green light, and it's always going to stay that way while it's on. But uh, you know, anything that's you know above the third light, so when it gets to the red, that's pretty significant. It could be something that's darting through here. It could be something that's standing here. It could be an entity that's screaming at you and trying to talk to you. There's there's no telling. Uh, but we will also use these during an, uh, an EVP session. Oh, that's really triggering. We started receiving some pretty strong feedback, so we decided to reach out. Is there a man uh, present with us right now? Light that up. Is that a yes? I think it is a yes. After experiencing our very first official interaction with the unknown, we continued on our journey. 
the great thing about Blackstar is I'm kind of considered a, a triple threat out here. Right. So what I mean by that is outside of having potential spiritual activity and ghosts and spirits, um, we also over the years have had reports of possible, and I use this lightly, um, of possible Sasquatch sightings. Wow. You know, this we are, you know, venturing here into the uh, Cleveland National Forest. So there's no telling what is out here. Um, also, when we're out here in the early morning hours or even on a tour, I can't even begin to tell you the weird things we have spotted in the sky. Now, I'm not saying it's aliens, but... <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, this place has everything, man. We got everything here. Next, we stopped at a famous tree in the canyon, a location where many have reported seeing apparitions in photographs. So, I took a few myself, and although mine didn't reveal anything supernatural, many photos previously taken by Orange County Ghosts and Legends tourists have contained very strange shapes and figures. Nevertheless, we decided to try our luck with the meter again. Once in a while, something will start to interact, and when it does, we'll start to uh, ask some questions and see if we can solicit any kind of response. So that's usually the goal. But when we don't get any hits, we just keep on moving. We moved on from the tree, and Chris discussed the details behind commonly heard strange sounds. What are some of the voices and sounds that you have witnessed here? Yeah, there's definitely a, you know, a common uh, idea that most of the things we capture are only on audio, but we do hear things that, you know, are in real time. So, you know, we've heard uh, recently a sound of an accordion. Uh, and it happens just for a couple seconds. It's very random. Uh, we hear tribal drums out here. And we definitely hear conversation that takes place in the bushes. You know, you can't make out what it is, but there's definitely some kind of uh, mumbling or uh, it's very limited. But there are times when maybe a couple people will hear it, or maybe one person will hear it, and maybe sometimes, uh, not maybe sometimes, but uh, sometimes everybody hears it. What? It's not unusual for just one person to experience or witness something strange in the canyon. And Chris shared with us a unique story of his own. At this point, it was about in the middle of the road. We're walking in and I spot something. One, two, three. And wow. it just disappeared over here. And the, the significant detail that I, I remember from this uh, experience that I had is that it had very long, thin arms. Wow. I'll never forget it. That story stuck with us as we headed over to the canyon's next paranormal hotspot, the mine. But this is the mine. Again, this was a uh, Black Star is named after the Black Star Coal Mining Company, uh, going back to, I believe, uh, 1879. Although the mine itself doesn't carry any particular legends, an area nearby surely does. And just up ahead, I, I believe that there is some kind of entity over there that has a particular distaste for women. Mm. Not that it's, you know, All right. not that it's... <laughs> Suit up, get not ready. That, not that it threatens or hurts anybody, right. but uh, I kind of run experiments and have some of the ladies in the group stand over where we have these incidents and we'll hear um, groans or, or low growls wow. in the bushes. Uh, what sounds like rocks being thrown. Even though I decided not to test that theory, Orange County Ghosts and Legends tours provided a very unique experience, perfect for any brave soul looking to explore the unknown. Well, that just about wraps it up for this episode of Pacific Coast Spotlight. We'd like to thank everyone at Too Sweet, OC Ghosts and Legends Tours, and Modology for stepping into our spotlight. I'm Miera Jennings, and we'll see you next time. Did you know that the average cost for a basic print ad in a magazine ranges from $3,000 to $7,000? Well, Pacific Coast Spotlight is offering you a chance to get much more for your money, connect with the community, and promote your business.
Pacific Coast Spotlight is a dynamic show highlighting local businesses and events that offer the very best in food, fashion, entertainment, and more. Don't miss this amazing opportunity. To submit your business to be featured on the show or to receive more information about becoming a sponsor, visit our website, PacificCoastSpotlightTV.com or send us an email to PacificCoastSpotlight at gmail.com.